I am really excited to be here and I want to thank Manuela for inviting me. I'm always impressed when I go to um, the, the 23 green classrooms that we support throughout New York City. You guys um, inspire us at NIPA. You inspire your communities, you inspire your teachers, and we're really, really proud of you. I just wanted to tell you that. These are some of the green classrooms that we support throughout the, new, the five boroughs. I was born in a small country in Southern Africa called Zambia. Anybody ever heard of it? Yeah. Wow, a lot of people, that's great. <laughs> so I grew up on um, our family farm. And when I was young, my parents would wake me up really early in the morning and ask me to help out. And I would grumble. I would be really you know, tired. I didn't want to wake up. But what I didn't understand is how lucky I was to be able to get fresh fruit and vegetables as soon as I wake up right on my doorstep. And that's a picture of my kids with their cousins. Now it's my turn to wake them up and make sure that they're helping out. So now in Zambia, a lot of people eat the food that they grow. And so we're very dependent on weather patterns. Just a few seasons of bad rain could mean droughts and famine. And so as you guys know, you guys know all about the climate. So you know that it's going to change the, we the weather patterns and it's going to be very difficult to predict what type of food we grow and when we grow it. So when I was 13 years old, my father became a diplomat and he started traveling all around the world. And so my family got the chance to live in many different parts of Africa, but I also lived in France and in Germany and in England. That's where I studied most of the time. And then I lived in China as well. And now I live in New York. So traveling around, I got the chance to really see how this change in weather patterns is going to disrupt food supply. I also wanted to talk a little bit about food scarcity. I know a lot of people think that hunger and food scarcity happens somewhere else far away, but we New Yorkers know that that's not true. A lot of our neighbors in New York City live in food deserts. That means they have a lack of access to healthy and affordable food. And we know during COVID, during the pandemic, a lot of New Yorkers found it very difficult to find food for their children and for their families. A lot of the food that's grown in New York City comes from somewhere else. It comes from, it's shipped or it's come from upstate or it's flown in. And so as we have more extreme weather events and more flooding events, it means that it's going to be very difficult in the event of a superstorm to get the food to us. And so it's really important that communities learn to grow food locally for themselves. So now that's a very bleak picture, but I have hope, you know why I have hope? Because of you guys, because I can see that the things that you're learning in the green classrooms, you guys have those solutions that we're going to need to be able to deal with all the different challenges that I've met, I've mentioned. Now, hydroponic gardens, that's not the whole story, but it's one solution and it's going to take a lot of integrated policy to come together to solve these challenges. And so I can see from your presentations and all the research you've done that you're not just learning about the hydroponics, you're also learning about energy efficiency, you're learning about sustainability, and you're learning about what it takes to empower communities by making sure that they're resilient and that they're growing food locally. When I look at you guys, I look at climate justice advocates, I look at food justice activists, I'm looking at environmental scientists, I'm looking at engineers. And so I know that the work that you're doing here is going to be what's going to get us, get us out of this mess. And what you're doing is really important. It's going to be shared with other students in New York City, but it's also going to be shared around the world. So I want everyone to get up on their feet. I want everybody to put their fist in the air, just like these kids, and say, food justice is climate justice. One, two, three. Food justice is climate justice.